Hi guys, September Best in Beauty time. Some of my favorite products will be discussed in this video. I've kind of got a few different um, segments of what I'm talking about. So I've got products that for me personally, just like my personal favorites. And then um, I recently traveled and did some wedding makeup and certain things worked out just wonderfully well for travel and just the whole vibe of this wedding. It was just so perfect. So I wanted to mention some of those. And then also I've got a few little flops to talk about. First and foremost, great affordable pri affordable primer here from e.l.f. It's the e.l.f. Hydrating Primer. If you are dry or you have some dry patchiness on your skin, which tends to be the category I come under. I don't feel like my skin as a whole has a super dry texture, but around my nose, different places, I think it might be pregnancy related, but the little bit of added moisture helps, but it's more than just the extra moisture because you could argue, well, why don't you just slap on a more heavy duty moisturizer or more of it or something like that? And I really do try to cater extra with my moisturizer to the areas where I know I'm dry. But this is like a little extra moisture boost, but also smoothness. And I feel like it locks in whatever moisturizer I have put on a little bit better than some other primers do. And primers have like a multitude of different purposes, right? Like I've got some that are more like brightening, almost highlighters under your makeup. And then I've got some that cater to hiding your pores. And those almost have a little bit more of a dry consistency to them. So I think you really want to make sure your primer isn't detracting from what you really need out of your makeup. So the hydrating primer for me from e.l.f. is working great right now. I do think this works even more effectively for me than the Smashbox one does because Smashbox has a hydrating version of photo finish. It says fills in fine lines and moisturizes with vitamins A, C, and E. So good stuff. Been enjoying it so much. Okay, show of hands. Does anybody out there actually read the description box? Because I put a lot of things in there and something I always put is what I'm wearing like for basic makeup, like my foundation, my blush, my eyes, my lips. I put all that down there. And something I have been wearing a lot lately, because I know I've been typing it down there a lot, is the Maybelline Dream Matte Mousse Foundation. I know, it's like, that's been on the market for so long, and I know I used it when it first came out, which was a long, long time ago. Like, was that maybe even before YouTube days? Long-standing drugstore product, and what brought it back to my attention, I follow uh, Catherine Webb on Instagram, and she is, I think she does some modeling, she's a new mother, she's married to an NFL guy, and frankly, I just really like her look. I like her makeup style, This her face. She's got a great face. I'll Okay. And one fine day she posted like a photo of the makeup that she likes to use and she said for like quick natural days this is the foundation she slaps on. So I thought hmm maybe I should be giving that dream matte mousse a second look. And funny enough I was playing with my Catrice matte mousse before I even had that little finding. I do think I prefer the Maybelline Matte Mousse a little bit better for just um, overall finish and coverage and the staying power is really good for me too. I wear it in the shade Light for nude. Wearing it today, have worn it in a lot of recent videos. The way I like to apply it, like you go into this product, if you're not familiar at all with what this is, it's a very different consistency foundation. It truly is mousse-like. Like this could be some kind of a desserty type thing. You could scoop in with a spoon. It's very, very light feeling, but it does give you a matte finish. And I like to kind of go in there with my finger, or you could probably be more sanitary about it and use like a little spatula or a little scoop of some sort. Um, I dab it all over my face, and then I just dab that out with a dampened beauty blender or beauty blender type sponge. I've got a few different ones in my rotation. I've used brushes. I've used just my fingers. The sponge is definitely my favorite way to get it all blended out and make it look super natural. But yet I still feel I have coverage. It's nice for a matte finish. It really blends out super easily. So that was a fun little like kind of rediscovered find something I knew I'd used in the past, but it's fun when other people bring that stuff to the forefront. Another thing I've been love, love, loving, and I mentioned this in my highlights that don't look like highlights video. It is the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector Liquid, the champagne pop shade in the liquid. So it's a pump. Um, you get a lot of product in here, by the way. How much exactly? It's 1.7 fluid ounces. 
hoses in here and I have gotten a little better at controlling the pump and just getting the itiest bit that I want because usually the way I apply it is I just want a little bit on my hand I spread it out and then I pick some up on the small stipple brush and boom you're, you're seeing what's going on right there yes that's the glow I'm talking about. It's so pretty. It's so undetectable. Like, I mean, get right up in my business and you cannot tell that there's actual product there. It just doesn't, these things never look like product. If you've got um, opal or pearl or various shades that this might come in, they all are so sneaky. So the Champagne Pop has been my latest love because I feel like it's even more, um, Mm, it has an even greater tendency of meshing right back in with your skin tone. You know, it's got that little peachy beige quality to it, and it just looks so good on top of anything. Or you can mix it in, just straight up mix it with your moisturizer, mix it with foundation, but I've just liked it purely as my highlight, just going right here. A few lip products I've been loving. This bad boy, this Alme. It's the Age Essentials Lip Treatment SPF 30, by the way, and it is rather large. If you think that looks like a big lip balm, it is. And I've been using it a lot, but it hasn't been like going down, you know what I'm saying? But it's got this little pink core and it smells ever so slightly like cotton candy. It's, it, it is really a very accurate take on cotton candy. That light, fresh sweetness, and it's such a good lip balm, guys. I love putting this on right when I start my makeup, right when I'm getting my moisturizer and primer and all that stuff on, and prepping the lips with this. My lips have been especially dry lately, having a cold and stuff, and it is so, so good. Certainly didn't love everything from that Alme Age Essentials line, but they had a good stick concealer, and this is fantastic as well. Another lip thing, my NARS Velvet Lip Glide. I do have a full review on all of these, and I would say my most used shade, which I kind of called this at the start, that this would be the one that I like to use a lot, the one called Bound, and it's that pretty, like, kind of mauve winter pink, as I like to call it, because it's just, it comes across on the lips as a really pretty soft pink. These are such a special texture, not a liquid lipstick. Like, if I could put out a little megaphone and say, everybody, these are not a liquid lipstick. These are like a lip cream cream and they do have a little bit of a staining tendency on the lips. I think they wear down very evenly. They apply so smoothly. Like it's really an experience. This is a luxurious lip product. Definitely look into that video I posted where I show every shade. Oh, quick mention to this product. This is from It Cosmetics. It's their Bye Bye Makeup. I have tried quite a few of these like makeup meltdown type products from different brands. They're like a cleansing balm that you put on your skin and they're meant to be really good for not zapping all the hydration out of your skin. And so I'm like, okay, how's this one going to be different? And I've definitely put a little dent into this and I've realized more recently that more is kind of more with this product. Like I started just kind of barely dabbing a thin layer all over my skin and it really works a little more effectively if you goop this stuff on a little bit, like to, to a reasonable extent. And it's so light, like this tub, I mean, this feels really, really light. Has anybody else who has this noticed that it's got like a little bit of a citrusy smell to it as well. I really like that too. And it just feels light as you put it on your skin, but yet it is this balmy, like definitely thicker than a gel cleanser, you know, type of feel. And so I just massage that in all over my skin. I can see it just lifting away the foundation and I get it all up in my eye area too. That's the thing. I think I was trying to go a little too sparingly, especially on my eyes. And the last few times I've used it, I've added a little more to that area and my eyes definitely don't feel sensitivity to it and it really does a pretty good job of of lifting the makeup away and then I just get down in the sink or if I'm in the shower you know get it all rinsed off I have checked this double checked this multiple times using my face washcloths afterward to see okay how much residue is still left behind I will find I still have a little bit of eye residue with this but it, it removes the face makeup pretty much fully I'd say on the eyes it kind of depends on how heavy I went with the eye makeup that day, frankly. How long have I been using this? Probably a month or so now. And then I started thinking it's ridiculous that I'm always following this up with a face wash cloth because those face wash cloths cost money, you know, and I'm, I 
they're not really doing a whole lot of work for me when this is removing most of my makeup and I just want to remove a little extra on the eyes. You know, it doesn't make sense. So I've been following this up with a little bit of my Garnier Micellar Cleansing Water. I've got the pink one in here, which is like the sensitive skin. I still use that at the start of every day. But in the bathroom, I've got the one that has the blue cap and it removes waterproof stuff. And I find just a little bit of that on a cotton round go around my face after I've used this, my skin feels so smooth and wonderful after those two steps, and I haven't even put on any technical moisturizer. I mean, I wear some makeup, folks. I put on some coverage on my face. I've usually got a pretty good eye going on there, and this does melt it all down quite well. And then just a little follow-up with the cotton round with the micellar stuff to just take care of any residue. And I'm not meaning like I feel a bunch of thick, sticky residue all over my skin after I use this, because that's really not the case. It rinses really well, but just itty bits of eye makeup that didn't quite get cleansed away. That little two-step thing has been really nice for keeping a little more hydration, I think, in my skin, and then, you know, go on with whatever night cream and whatnot that I want to use. So those are some big-time favorites, and then I wanted to tell you guys just some things that I used during this wedding, which was the most beautiful, like, tones of blush type of wedding. I mean, barely their pinks, cameo, like, soft beige, pretty colors into a little bit deeper red rosier shades. My dress for the wedding, I was a bridesmaid and I had one of the like darker. My dress was almost like the color of this palette. So it was so, so beautiful. And I felt like I pulled several palettes to take with me because I was doing the bride's makeup and ended up doing several other people's makeup too. And these things that I took along ended up working so, so nicely with that whole feel. And it's not like, oh, my dress is pink. My eyes have to be pink. My lips have to be pink. No, I, I really liked accompanying these soft pink with pretty nude, just gentle feminine makeup might be the word to describe it. But something that was so great to travel with and this would be, this is going to be talked about as probably one of my top holiday picks ultimately when it's all said and done. It's the It Cosmetics Je Ne Sais Quoi Face Palette and I really like this because it contains four products that It Cosmetics actually has in their line. They're not just four random things, but it's a nice size face palette here. And then they give you the Sunshine in a Compact Bronzer. This was the only one that I already had, and I knew I liked that bronzer. So you also get the Bye Bye Pores Blush in Je Ne Sais Quoi. You get the Bye Bye Pores Pressed Powder, which I really had wanted to try. So many of you have told me that that was a good product when I had talked about loving the Too Faced Primed and Poreless. And then um, this is a highlight down here. This is the perfect lighting luminizer. It used to say je ne sais quoi, but I've already worked through that. I have worn this a lot my own self. I'm wearing all of these things today, and it was just the handiest thing ever to do people's makeup, you know, warm up the skin tone, give it a little more life. The blush looks so good in every circumstance. I'm wearing that blush today as well. This was a nice, like, under eye setting powder or a little bit of a touch up if there was some shine, and this highlight is so pretty. I mean, it is soft, pearly, hangs together, not loose and chunky. Really, really impressed with this palette, and the bronzer is exactly like the bronzer that's sold in full size. That's the only one I really have to compare to a full size and see like is it the same quality? That's the only one I had beforehand, but I really have been happy with everything. I see why so many of you like this um, Bye Bye Pores Pressed Powder. That one really is smooth and nice to work with. Everything in here is matte except the highlight. So the Bye Bye Pores, obviously, since that's kind of like a translucent powder, you're not seeing it a whole lot, but that blush is matte also so so pretty. Love this. Uh, the quality of the combo of products and then the convenience factor is so great for travel to have all those things in one. A few other things that I enjoyed using, um, I used this on myself and at least a couple other people, was this Becca Ombre Rouge palette. Talk about um, pretty tones of rose there all the way to burgundy. I'm wearing this again today and I just think it's so wearable, so easy. Really nice smooth matte eyeshadows, a light cream color, a soft, like very soft pinky lilac, dusty mauve, 
this gorgeous kind of warm brown and then a deep burgundy maroonish color. I find these to be insanely easy to blend, great for that, you know, kind of burgundy smoky eye, but just so, so no brainer. You know, there's not a lot to it. I also took my um, Styled by Harouche palette here because it had a nice peachy blush in case I wanted to go more peachy on someone's blush instead of pink. And then I really found myself kind of sticking with these mattes down here on the bottom. There's a matte like soft warm brown, a little bit deeper brown, taupey kind of color, and this shade here called Smitten. I almost just called it Mitten, but it's a really nice texture of a shimmery shade for just that little um, pop of sheen on the lid. Um, I've done a full review on this product, so please check it out if you have questions, but I took my Bite, the Perfect Bite set. It's a set of four Amuse Bouche lipsticks, so Bite's newer formula of lipstick, just mini sized, and I loved what was in here because everything had like a hint of neutral behind it, I felt. You're getting a nice nude in Honeycomb, a little bit deeper nude with Pepper. Fig is like a gorgeous, gorgeous, wearable, every woman's pink, and then um, Nori is your nice, deep, rich, brick red, brownish neutral. Today, my lip color is a mix of Pepper and Nori, and that's what I love so much about this set. They're great standalone lip colors, but they're awesome to mix as well. You can really get that ideal shade that's not, you know, maybe a really poppin' bright color. I mean, it's certainly not. All of these shades are kind of rooted in this rosy neutral place, so I really like the set. Again, for more info, please check out the full review, but as you can imagine, a set of mini lipsticks very much an ideal thing to take with you and it fit the color scheme and just the whole look of the wedding I thought so well. Now I got a few little fails. Number one, this I got from Dollar Tree and they had a bunch of sponges that looked like this. I'm kicking myself for not keeping the packaging because I don't I don't know where that is now. Some Dollar Trees I feel like have fantastic selections of makeup. Mine has a crap load of nail polish, a few lip products, and a bunch of these sponges that do not work. <laughs> Um, various colors, again, I saturate it fully with water at the sink and it just doesn't grow in size. It doesn't get any softer than it is currently. I had high hopes. I thought maybe this is going to be like that amazing $1 bargain makeup sponge, but it's just not spongy enough. It does not come close to doing what a beauty blender actually does. Another little gripe I have here is the Urban Decay Perversion Waterproof Fine Point Eye Pen. This is a style of liner that's like, it's not a little brush tip. It truly is the felt tip. I have had some even more inexpensive felt tips that don't give me this problem, but this one has been just in a continual state of fraying a little bit at the tip. Let's see how good the HD is, my friends. Can you see the tip? right now there's even a little bit of stuff fraying off the end just that little bit of felt tip you know fabric and I find myself having to go in there and I try to get it off and it's just a problem and it's been that way from word go it's just given me that little obstacle and it's not good when you're trying to be super precise like right in here or get a really nice wing and you feel like you're constantly getting pieces of a felt tip coming off what you just saw there was probably to the lesser extent of what I've dealt with and then I feel like it's been worse than that at times but it's really nice and black and it seems to last well and it dries down matte and it does a lot of things that I like but I just can't deal with that fraying type aspect. Last little thing is not like a full out fail, but it's more just a little word of caution here on the Tardist Pro um, lash glue. This is an all out black lash glue. It's not even like, you know, the, some of the duo dark tone lash glues that start grayish. This is actually black right out of the tube. And I would definitely caution any false lash beginners from using something like this because if this gets a little bit off, like if you place your lashes down and then oops, one end of the lashes just hit me on the eyelid and now I've got black glue there. It's not so easy to just pick it up right away and remove it. Like I have had to actually redo portions of an eye look, like get out some remover, get the glue off, go back in with eyeshadow, patch over the problem area. It's not cool. It takes a lot of time. And if you're very confident with the strip of lashes that you're using, you know they are a perfect fit for your lash line. Maybe you've used them a lot and they've just kind of bonded 
you know, with the shape of your eye. That's one thing. You can put this dark glue on and apply with some confidence, but if you're experimenting with a different kind of band and maybe they're a little bit unruly and hard to deal with, go with your clear lash glues and then if need be, go over, you know, any visible glue that remains after most of it's dried with an eyeliner. You know, you can always do that. The nice thing about it being black is that as soon as you set it down, I mean, it really be does become invisible. That's kind of the bonus of using something like this. Your lash line as a whole just looks nice and dark and there's nothing even potentially showing through. So I kind of like that. But even me who's used lashes for years, I don't feel like I can get away with this on just any kind of lash because some are difficult. Some lashes just don't bend the same way and they give you trouble. And that has caused me a lot of extra work on some eye looks on several occasions. So I do love my uh, Revlon Precision Lash Glue, the clear. That works super good. So that is it everybody. That is my best in beauty for this month. I can't believe we are now on to October, but that means even more exciting fall favorites and more holiday releases. Yay! Thank you so much for sharing your review requests with me. I really appreciate that and I will see you guys next time. Bye!